shorts, 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 shorts. Hello friends, I thought I would pop in today and do another little reading. So I, this morning was using my Twin Hearts deck. That is a little romance slash love deck. Um, as we get closer to February, you know, outside of the whole marketing of Valentine's Day and all that, I mean, there is this consciousness of romance and love in the air. We can really tap into that at any time, but um, I'm just being a little romantic at heart. Uh, my Venus is in Cancer, so <laughs> hence all of the love, love stories and romance. But this morning out of the Twin Hearts deck came, um, some of the cards in that deck are quotes from my books. And the one that came out that always intrigues me, I just, because all of my books are channeled regardless of whether they're fiction or nonfiction, um, the one that always seems to intrigue me is this one about the stigmata. And I've done a couple of different shows on the podcast about the stigmata. Um, but this card just keeps coming out. So I'm going to read the quote off the card and then we're going to intuitively um, plug into my book, The Stein Returns, and see what little quote or what little passage or chapter comes out for us for today's little short about romantic partnerships. So the card is Karmic Entanglement. The quote is, it was as if she had been in some strange trance, and this thing, this rose on the back of her neck, burning into her, had woken her up somehow. This is Pamela Cartwright in The Stallion Returns. So I have in front of me the little book, The Stallion Returns. I'm just going to flip, flip it, flip, flip, and stop. And let's see where I am today. All right, <laughs> let's, let's read because some of this is a little erotica. Let's see, I may have to skip over that, but... This is chapter nine. This is, I think, the chapter where this stigmata happens. Let me just see here. Oh, wow. Well, let's just see <laughs> what I read. All right. Hard, hard downtown. Pamela could feel the serenity fall over her almost as soon as she placed her bags in the rented town car and pulled out of the driveway. She was actually doing it, taking some time alone and with self-care to boot. She was pretty proud of, of standing up for herself. She knew she really needed this time alone, too. She had some things on her mind that she needed to think over, and driving on the highway always put her in the receptive mode for stream-of-consciousness thinking and getting problems solved. So maybe this is where you're at, the energy that you're in somehow as you've listened to these shorts, because that's part of it too, is the readings always have significance or could somehow be how energy is playing out within and around you, um, things you need to focus on for your own personal growth or healing. So let's see, the large car took to the 10 highway and headed north towards gentle waters. She had planned it out in her mind before she left. Dinner, then a long soak in the hot springs tub, a glass of sherry, and a massage before bed. The spa was very accommodating and was able to make her room up for her with such short notice. This spa catered to the rich Dallas elite, and even when a drunken heiress wanted a room at 3 a.m., they went out of their way to please. Pamela had reserved the Catskill suite and would have dinner on the veranda overlooking the mountains. She couldn't wait to arrive, but first antiques shops called out to her, hoping she would stop in and buy something new for the ranch. You got to keep the clients thinking that no expense is spared, especially when they were boarding million-dollar trick ponies and sending Daddy's little girl for riding lessons. The ranch had to look as affluent as it could, even though when there were bills yet to be paid. Pamela pulled the car into the Regency Antiques and Fine Wares parking area and allowed the valet to take the car out front. She got her expensive bag from the floorboard and tipped the hot Latin car hop with a 20. He definitely wasn't her type, but he had called her Miss instead of Ma'am, which had warmed her up to him quite a bit. Yes, Pam loved Edgar, 
but the old beauty queen in her and the tiger temptress that lived inside longed for more attention than ever from the male persuasion. Aging beauty can leave a longing like that. She walked, no, sauntered really into the shop and was met by Parker, the assistant to the owner. Parker had known she was coming and set aside some particularly fancy dude ranch finds that he thought would go well at Thunder Rose. He had been to the ranch several times at Pamela's insistence, knowing that his design skills and keen eye for a good bargain would come in handy. "'Miss Cartwright, how are you today, beautiful?' he said, handing her a margarita. "'Quite well, Parker,' she said, giving him a tight hug, much tighter than he expected. She took the margarita and downed a long sip. The strength of the tequila warmed her body, and she reminded herself that she was driving. But, oh, she wanted that feeling again— the light-headed, fancy, free feeling of youth and no cares in the world. And alcohol often brought out the maiden in her. This maiden could and had on many occasions started something she often didn't want to finish. So she reminded herself again that she was driving and saving her strength and virility for her soon-to-be husband. The thought took her by surprise and she felt anxiety rise up in her chest. This was no time for admonishment or for cold feet, yet she couldn't stop the anxiousness. So she took an even longer drink from the margarita mug and handed it back to Parker for a refill. No wonder she's going to get drunk. He's giving her mugs of margaritas. He took the glass and headed back to the lounge area, leaving Pamela looking back at herself in an ornate oak mirror carved with galloping horses. She must have it, she thought, her head starting to swim quite warmly with the drink inside her. She felt loose, and yet still the anxiety about something welled up in her. Why was she now feeling this after she'd had a perfectly fine morning with Edgar? No fights or pushback from him on her plans. She knew that he loved her, at least he said so. But it wasn't the love leaving her with butterflies. It was the leaving behind of something within her. The woman who had tried vehemently through the years to keep herself young and attractive for others. She was always open and receptive in case some younger lover might come along. She didn't know Edgar's true feelings then. And even though they had both come out of the closet to each other with their feelings, and she had agreed to be his wife, she didn't want to lose that other part of herself, the vixen and temptress longing to be free. She had some hard thinking to do about the matter, she decided, as Parker returned with another mug full of margarita. Yes, she did, she decided. But first the mirror, she thought, as she downed another long drink from the mug. This could get good, she thought, as she handed her credit card to Parker to pay for the mirror she would lovingly display in the main hall entrance to the Thunder Rose offices. She chose several small paintings and lamps in the same ranch life theme and didn't balk at the $20,000 tab. She loosened the buttons on her blouse, heady from the last drink, and signed the credit slip with a flourish. She needed this, she thought again, as her mind went back to her youth and the young Quint she had beguiled without even trying. She needed something. She pondered what that could be as she hugged Parker goodbye. He offered to send the limo for her, recognizing borderline drunkenness when he saw it, but she shooed the idea away and went outside to fetch the car. She literally bumped into Miguel, hot Latin valet, coming up the drive entrance and handed him her ticket. The feel of her breast against her chest was not lost on him. Even if the aging beauty was 20 years his senior, she was a fine and lusty prize, he thought, as he chided himself for having an erection on duty and it being so easily seen given the tight uniform he was wearing. Pamela adjusted her composure, for it was in the presence of someone like Miguel that in the past would have activated the sultry beauty within. But Tam, Tam, holy crap, but <laughs> Pam, oh, wow. oh there's no, but Pam didn't want to have to answer to Edgar. <laughs> lest he think she was hiding something from him. And if she decided to do <laughs> and if she decided to do what she wanted to do in this moment, oh God, feeling her own heat rise within, she would definitely be hiding a deep dark secret from her soon to be betrothed with the devil on one shoulder and the tequila <laughs> now I'm all tongue tied and the tequila deep down in her belly suggested otherwise, Pam, come on now. It seduced her from within. Just look at him. He wants you and you want it. What do you say? For old time's sake, it conjoled her again. Pam looked at Miguel as he sauntered past trying to conceal himself. Holy God. Hi there, Pam said, hating herself in the moment. I was just going to town and then to my spa. Do you want to join me? 
she asked the younger Miguel, who had turned, and in seeing the buxom beauty hardened again, what, miss, he stammered, not believing that a rich older woman was interested in him. A young, yet hot and fiery guy from the other side of town, although it wasn't the first time he had told himself he wouldn't get involved in any way with someone from his work. But he saw the pert nipples behind the sheer fabric of Pam's blouse, and he couldn't resist and almost couldn't wait. But the waiting might be worth it in more ways than one, he thought. After all, rent was coming due again, and he thought he might be short if tips didn't perk up. I'm asking you to come along with me for a ride, Pam said, unabashedly, and suddenly craving another drink. Well, of course, if you grab me another drink and my car, we can go right now, she said with a sultry slur that turned most men to jelly. Well, I do get off work in 20 minutes, he said, his Latin accent turning Pamela's knees, knees, bees, knees, I can't even talk, to butter. I'll wait, hon, it's getting so sultry on me. Oh, I'll wait, hun, she said, wiping the sweat from her upper lip and licking her mouth in that way she knew turned men on. How about that drink now, she said, sweetly moving closer and slipping a $50 bill deep down into his front hip pocket, brushing her hand lightly against him. I am paraphrasing some of these more erotica parts since this is going up in different places. That... Anyway, sure thing, Miguel said, wiping away his own sweat with his handkerchief. I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere, he said, hoping he really could wait to get into bed with her. All those exercises. <laughs> I can't read this. All those exercises. <laughs> Holy shit. Why am I getting all giggly about this today? I mean, when I wrote it, it certainly was very sultry. All those exercises. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do it. Oh, I guess. <laughs> he totally, he was just saying that Miguel needed this after this week he'd had. With his drink in hand, Pamela <laughs> son of a bitch, thought the last 20 minutes fly by and sufficiently jazzed up. She didn't feel a sense of anything other than flying fancy free on the wings of lust, luck, and young desire. The kind a girl feels when the guy she's been watching all along exhibits some interest. Oh, do I want to keep going? Let's see. Uh, let's just say that they leave in the car together. They pull over in the middle of nowhere and get in the back seat. They have a little interlude. <laughs> I can't read that right now. It's making me laugh. And then, oh my God, <laughs> her purse. As they're, like, in the car, Pam's purse lay open on the front floorboard as her cell chirped a call coming in over the Bluetooth, but over the urban cowboy radio station coming from the Sirius satellite and the moaning from the back seat, Edgar's call went unnoticed and unanswered, shuffled off to voicemail as two lovers came again. Oh, my God. Anyway, (laughs) I don't know why it's so funny, but it's definitely not short. Uh, obviously meant to lift your spirits more than get you sultry and heated up. Uh, but that was karmic entanglement <laughs> from the stallion returns. Thank you so much for listening. Take care. We'll see you again soon. Bye.